turned out at the last Solar Voice Commission meeting. What was significant about what Mr. Uh, Jamison did, he went back to some years that were not in your um, in your handout for Mr. Field. He actually started in 2010 through 2020. So Mr. Years, Mr. Field started in 2014. He left off three critical years of high tonnage, and um, that was 2011, 2012, and 2013. I think what concerned me greatly about what Mr. Peel said, and I'm going to name him by name, as he named me by name. Um, I normally don't get into a tip or tap, but I think trying to discredit someone is unacceptable, and that's what he attempted to do. I was at a meeting very many years ago when the over 800 tons was discussed. So I know it's not a figure of my imagination, it's in the minutes, it's also on my video which I will produce at some point. But um, using the numbers that Mr. Jameson gave, using 270 days, then there were three years with high tonnage. Um, Mr. Peel used the 365 days, and I think there's a discrepancy or an inconsistency in the current contract because the current contract will, will specify their hours, which are um, I sent to the, the mayor and Mr. Cullen, and also it includes holidays, and that's in the contract. So we're not working, they're not working 365 days. But it's interesting that in the calculations, it's used as a basis, in my opinion, to lower the tonnage. So, um, Anyway, during Mr. Fields' comments, he said something that really was upsetting after he questioned my numbers, which I got out of the packets. That's it. I got them out of the packets. But more importantly, the exceedance of the 800 tons was documented by actually Santec themselves, and they signed off on a document that is in the packet. Um, I, I think what is also bothersome is that during Mr. Fields' comments, he acknowledged that they had exceeded 800 tons for a short period a while back. Nobody asked him when that was, but he knows when it happened. And uh, I'll be making a records request so he can um, produce the documents. But anyway, I think... Um, there's work to be done with regards to this contract. Um, since Mr. Jameson brought up the 200 and I think he brought up 271 days, I like to use the 273 because that's what TDEC uses in the calculation of the airspace. And um, I did find two documents yeah. in the packets where Dr. Bacchus, the consultant for the Solar Waste Commission, and also the VIP with Santec used 270 days. So I think the, the fact that the Solid Waste Commission, because of Mr. Jameson's efforts, they're going to go back and look at that verbiage and see if they can put it into the contract that they will be extending possibly um with regards to addressing that and like i said there's two inconsistencies if you have the operation hours that are specified in the contract and then you have <laughs> another uh part of the contract that sort of you know uh, undoes that verbiage but um i guess the thing that i feel very very uncomfortable uh, uncomfortable is that we have no guarantees that we're going to get 150,000 yearly. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to increase the tonnage and we're also going to have to um, raise the tipping rates. And there's also another area that's very unsettling and that is the out of county garbage. Um, with a new company coming in, we don't know what where this garbage will come from other than with could come within a 150 mile radius 
of the state of Tennessee, and that's still unacceptable. We don't want to turn our community into a big dump. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Tracy, you want your seat? Yes, sir. Thank you. Come on, I'll hold up Rich for a second. when we're done with public comments. Okay, Rich, step to the podium. Tell us what's on your mind as if I didn't know. <laughs> I know it's not more garbage. Couldn't be. There's nothing left. Two weeks ago, I came prepared to give you a presentation of seven pages, which you do have in front of you. And in the interim, I emailed each of you a synopsis of what's in those seven pages. I also found, as Pat alluded to, an email between Dr. Bacchus, Steve Field, and Kevin Stevens, who talks about one of the issues that I have a major concern with, is the backloading of the closure of the cells. To quote Dr. Bacchus, it's not a very aggressive plan that they put forth with a lot of interim closure areas. It is less expensive for Samtech to fund the bond than it is to close a cell. You're talking about 1.6 to 2.5 million for cells, CR, CA1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, with 5 never being filled. So your back end loading about six, seven million dollars in the last four years of a contract. How does the how is the, the Solid Waste Commission going to ensure that Santex putting that money away and or Republic so that when we get to those last four years they get closed properly and we don't get stuck? This contract can be explicit in that Santex contract ends on a specific date and they are responsible for closure of the landfill. But that language is not in that contract. Regardless of whether they achieved the permitted grades. Also, in reviewing things with Dr. Bacchus recently, his last 18 months, there is a number of elevation changes discussed whether it's 10,068, whether it's 10,070, <coughs> whether it's going to be at 10,093. But one thing for sure that's in this extension, as it was in the previous one, is a height element of 1125. But if you use the 1070, the existing height of the cells that have been filled, you're talking about another 55 feet high. That's a lot of height especially for the people over in Tennessee National. <coughs> and you're memorializing that closure to be the last four years, and you're memorializing in this contract extension the gift, and that's all I can say about it, of 1.2 million cubic yards across 80 acres and 20 foot old feet. And as I said previously, if you don't think this is setting a duck up for another 50 years, you've got to be kidding yourself. C5, which is the last 14 acres of the 53, will not be filled by the 23rd And you still have 14 acres in the original plan, the 67, that could be filled. Add that to this 80 acres, 79.5, that they just dug. 1.2 million now, you get a landfill that's well over 50 years in life, probably 75. Adam asked me what I thought it was worth. If you look at the 41 <coughs> acres that are being filled at the moment, it's taking you well over 25 years to do it. You've got 14 above the 53. That takes you out past 2038. And you got 80 more sitting there that you just took a hole in. That's 95. That's three times the number of acres that you've got filled today. At $3 million, 
3.6 actually gross revenue per year for the next 18 years you're at 54 million dollars what that landfill is worth to project that out another 20 30 40 50 things worth well over 200 million dollars I would like to see a lot more definitive language in the contract about the specific issues that I gave you, one through six, or don't sign that contract. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Bo Carey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm uh, here to report. I just, I'm Bo Carey. I'm the chairman of the 150 years celebration for Loudoun County and it's been a few months since I've come to report and that's really all I'm here for I just to just give you a brief report and an update maybe ask for your uh, input and response but uh, when you're, you're all aware of the event that we had in April which had to be a virtual event where we celebrated where we brought everybody up to speed, showed them the contents of the 1970 time capsule, brought back uh, Paul Brakeman and Harvey Sproul, who had served as, as, as uh, leaders in the 1970 centennial celebration. Uh, had a very good event. Joe Spence, our longtime, uh, we dedicated our coloring book uh, to Joe Spence, the longtime county historian, and uh, he spoke briefly. And so we, it was a great event. Unfortunately, it couldn't be a public event. Shortly after that time, two or three families showed up, some from that don't live in the, even in the state anymore, that uh, had heard this was uh, going to happen. And uh, it was very fortunate we had some of the, the old contents displayed at the Loudoun Library, and they got to come in and see it, and it was a very good day. Um, at that time, uh, the next following month, our committee decided, okay, well, COVID will be over by November, right? <laughs> and so we will have a big public rally on <laughs> November 14th at the courthouse. And uh, you know where that went. Uh, as the summer progressed and we saw that that was not to be the case, we decided to, uh, to basically come forward with the plans for the new time capsule. And uh, just to inform you, some of you may already know about it, but the plan we put together was to number one contract the, the, the Teleco Village Woodworkers Association. And our, our representative from the Teleco Village, Dennis Preston, did that, brought in Mr. Bob Brown to meet with us, and they are graciously building our, our new time capsules for us. Um, we decided not to put them below ground again based on prior results, and we are hoping to put them in a public building. I think you all know we would love to put them in the courthouse. And uh, I if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But the specifications that we gave the Teleco Village Woodworkers Club were to build these no more than 12 inches deep so that if it doesn't interfere with county business, with office holders and what they do in those hallways, that it can fit on virtually any wall without impeding the, uh, the coming and going of Loudoun County. Uh, if it doesn't work in the courthouse, we hope it would work in, in, a, in maybe possibly in the lobby of this building or even in the county office building. So that's where it is now. We have still have contents uh, on display at, uh, at the Loudoun Library. We, we were able to display them at Roan State in Lenore City during early voting, and a lot of people saw them there. But the plan is to build those cabinets, as I said, very shallow, and they're already working on it. We have, thanks to the support of the county commission, uh, we, we have the old beams. We were able to rescue those we do appreciate your support on that. We were able, we, the, the Teleco Village Woodworkers has some of that material, and those plans are available. We intend to, to, to we're going to be putting a clear, uh, visible display on top, which will have the contents of the old time capsule. So all the new stuff will be underneath uh, in the cabinet. Uh, the, the, the old contents, dog tags, coins, old Bibles, and church bulletins and whatnot will be on the top. Um, so what did we do on November 14th, just this past Saturday? We didn't have a big public rally, we couldn't. We saw that the, the big thing we could do about having public gatherings was to have, to try to really build up here towards the end of the year, people participating in the new time capsule, getting students, getting old, 
older people, getting everybody to put something in there, uh, into that time capsule. So, um, on we just uh, Joyce Fields, a member of our committee, who, who is the chairman of the, uh, the Dunbar Rosenwald School Project, the oldest African American school in the in the area, which is being you know, re revitalized. She she mentioned to me one day, well, how about a drive by, and. Uh, the Greenback Historical Society, I was happy to participate in their drive-by event uh, a couple of weeks ago. I got to ride, uh, uh, I chauffeured around Mr. Bobby Anderson, a, a wealth of historic knowledge of the Greenback and Morganton area, and we drove to about 12 sites as a drive-by, a safe way to, to visit old historic sites and do history. So we decided to make our event this past Saturday a drive-by opportunity where our, our committee, with masks on, uh, people could drive in right up here in the, the annex uh, parking lot and drop things off. Um, that's not the last opportunity to, to donate. We, we hope people will get things to us. Uh, our, our, uh, our email address, 150yearsofloco.com, of people can email things in. You can still drop things off at the Loudoun Library. Some of the other libraries we're, we're getting set up to accept things. Uh, you can bring it to me over at Greer's. Uh, we have envelopes to put things in, so we're still doing a full court press to do that. But we were tickled to death that, uh, that this past Saturday we, we filled up about three tubs of, of, of good stuff for the new time capsule. Um, a couple of you came by. Uh, I know that uh, Election Commissioner Susan came by, and actually we have the election official election returns uh, plus some old ones she came up with and went with that time capsule. So uh, the cherry on, on the, the cake that day, the, the, the topping I should say, that really made it was something we didn't expect. Uh, at 2 o'clock when we were finishing up the event, um, Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally, our state senator, showed up along with uh, Representative Lowell Russell and Representative Kent Calfey, the two representatives uh, in the state house for, for Loudoun County. Um, they uh, must have tipped off the county mayor because he was there as well. And they, uh, on a side note, I think they made a presentation to him that he can share later about uh, some efforts that he's made and I'm sure that all of you have been involved in for the county and dealing with the crisis and whatnot. But then we, we took them over, uh, the four of them over to the time capsule right back here, uh, marker on the corner of the courthouse lawn and they did a proclamation. I'm going to let you see it. I'm going to just read a couple of highlights because I think it's it's very well worded. I don't need a mask. I need glasses to read this. But um, it essentially reads, um, I'll skip some of the whereases and whatnot. Uh, whereas Loudoun County was drawn onto the state maps for the first time on May 27, 1870, that's 150 years ago, by an act of the General Assembly, the county was formed from portions of Rome, Monroe and Blunt counties, and whereas the county was originally named Christiana County, but was renamed a few days later in honor of nearby colonial Fort Loudoun, which was named for John Campbell, the fourth Earl of Loudoun and commander of the British forces during the French and Indian War. And whereas Loudoun County contains 229 square miles of land that lie on both sides of the Tennessee River and extends north to the Clinch River, the county boasts the broad bottoms of the Tennessee River and the fertile valleys of Sweetwater, Pond, Fork, and Town Creeks. And the Little Tennessee River passes through the county. Of course, the Little Tennessee River's a lake now. <laughs> Whereas the state of Tennessee takes great pride in the accomplishments of Loudoun County and is grateful for the positive impact the county has on the state's economy and the special place it is one in the hearts of its citizens and visitors alike. And whereas Loudoun County is one of the great counties in Tennessee and it is most appropriate that we honor this fine community and its citizenry as they commemorate the significant milestone in their historic existence. Now, therefore, I, Randy McNally, Speaker of the Senate, the 111th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, in conjunction with the undersigned, do hereby proclaim that we honor and congratulate the citizens of Loudoun County upon the celebration of the county's sesquicentennial and extend to them our best wishes for continued success, growth, and prosperity in their outstanding community, which is a true Tennessee treasure. Proclaimed in Nashville, Tennessee, on this 14th day of November 20th. November 2020, by Randy McNally, Speaker of the Senate, Lowell Russell, uh, representative for the 21st House District, and Kent Calfee, representative of the 32nd House District. I'll uh, pass them to the middle and then I'll recollect for those that want to see it. Thank you. <laughs>
You gonna frame that and put it above the time capsule or somewhere in the courthouse? Yeah, we're gonna put it in the time capsule. Oh, okay. We unfortunately have two copies, and so I think your comment, though, seriously, is something we should do. Is frame one, uh, put it uh, and, and post it, and absolutely, and and then put the other in the time capsule. Uh, you're welcome for input on that. So, um, I was uh, talking with. Um, Clark Harrelson, just briefly, I know he's uh, going to be talking tonight about, about usage of the courthouse. Um, and in conjunction with that, uh, I, you know, we've had these conversations. I know it's premature to say, oh, there's a place in the old courthouse when it's ready that would house. We're actually doing three of these cabinets if we need them all. Uh, they're all with no, not stick out from the wall more than 12 inches. So I'm not uh, here asking you that at your next. Uh, true commission meeting to approve that because I know everything's in flux uh, with that courthouse and where it's going and and exactly the, the dynamics of what what physically can be done to allow uh, Ms. Niles and Mr. Harrelson to, to, to you know to do their jobs in, in the space that they need. What I would ask is that uh, you consider and come up with something at your next meeting uh, to at least authorize it to go in a, a county public buildings, and then we can take it from there. I, I think we need to have that wrapped up by the end of the year before we disband our group. So um, again, uh, I, we trust your thinking. If it can be in the courthouse, great. If, it can, if not, maybe the upstairs in the annex uh, or somewhere where the public can come and see the old stuff and know that the, the new stuff's underneath. And if not that, possibly the county office building. Um, we even thought about a, a traveling road show with these things, you know, have it in Lenore City one, one year and, and Greenback or Philadelphia the next, and, and who knows, that's a possibility, but the, they're going to be pretty heavy. So I, I, we would ask you to, to, uh, to come up with something uh, and recommend to us how you think it should be displayed. We don't have a set plan. First preference is it might go in the courthouse. It will be made of the old materials. We have some of the old nails. Um, and so that's that's sort of interesting, uh, but that's that's what we would ask you to consider. Uh, hopefully, it's your next meeting, and if not, definitely in December, so that we we can disband our organization with some plan that that, that those uh, artifacts, uh, both old and new, would be preserved. Um, if you could please, yes, and I think I speak for all the commissioners. Please express to them our appreciation and sincere gratitude for the work that you and the committee have done. Well, I'll do that, uh, Commissioner Mears. Thank you. The uh, I can tell you, the uh, when we put the group together, there's 11 of us, and, and we have people, of course, representing each each geographic area. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I sort of appointed myself chairman. <laughs> I did a power move. Uh, but, but none of them were going to take Nobody it. fought you for it. <laughs> Nobody uh, fought you for it. But uh, we've got some real worker bees. Uh, it's just amazing uh, how, uh, and it's sort of like the, the, the pride of lines, it's, it's the women that really are doing the work. They, they just put in, uh, uh, they, they put in tons and tons of work and have been remarkable. Uh, it just amazes me how much energy and new ideas they have. And, and the guys, uh, you know, Strategically, John Napier, who's the chairman of the Loudoun County Historical Society, and Daryl Tuck, who's the historian, you know, uh, they've they've done a lot too. But they sort of had their procedural uh, positions, and then the ladies have just really worked tirelessly. They're not through. So, uh, are there any other questions? Thank you, Commissioner. You did a good job. The uh, number five tonight is the discussion on the courthouse renovation. Yeah. And Thank if, you if, both. if our part ties in, great uh, on that, but, but definitely if not, we would hope you would have some type of a uh, discussion of it at, at, at your next commission meeting or at, at the very last. And, and, and we're available uh, between now and December to come and, and discuss it further or sit down with some of your people. I will, um, uh, more than anything, we still want all of you and your people you know, the organizations you're in, to participate in the time capsule. Uh, get us something. Uh, Put something down for your great grandchildren uh, to see. It can actually, in this case, we'll actually let people uh, address it to or designate it to be opened or, or passed along to. Uh, if you're a member of the 
Fort Creek Baptist Church, and you want that church to, to receive whatever you've left uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the new time capsule, then we can designate it that they would get that. Um, I, I couldn't help but see, and, and this is not planned, I wouldn't ask, I couldn't help but see that it looks like you're considering tourism tonight. I, I will say that the, this whole, uh, the, the game plan for this was hatched uh, uh, by uh, Ruth McQueen, who at the, uh, last year, a year ago, who was at the time a board member of the, uh, of the tourism board, and she and, and uh, director at the time, Baker, now Harold, put together a, a plan and brought it to some of us, and then we uh, brainstormed on it. So they, I will say this, just a, a plug, if you're actually considering budget or something tonight, that uh, the, the Visitors Bureau has been extremely supportive uh, not only with, with resources, uh, but with, with effort and with, with materials, um, handling a lot of our, our website and email uh, information. So uh, anything we can do to support them, they have been extremely supportive. As, as I think you all know, we, uh, even though Monroe County uh, got something like $8,000 for their uh, out-of-county commission for their, their sesquicentennial effort, a lot of the other counties our size have gotten uh, 10,000, 15,000 and more. We've never asked for a penny, and we're not going to. Uh, <laughs> even if you tell us we can't put the stuff in a public building, we're not going to. We, we're proud that we've been able to solicit uh, support and resources from organizations like the Historical the two Historical Societies, Greenback and Loudoun County, as, as well as the Visitors Bureau and some other private donations. So. Uh, we're, we're rather proud that we've been able to get through the year without having to ask for taxpayer money, and we hope, uh, we think it's even despite the horrible, uh, the horrible situation we've had to deal with in terms of trying to have a celebration during a pandemic, uh, we're, we're proud that we've been able to do it uh, on, a, on a tight budget. And so all we ask is give us some good support here in the last six weeks of, of the year, and we'll finish strong. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both. Okay, that concludes the public comments. I do understand Commissioner Brewster has something she would like to add for item six. Balls is not trash. Commissioner Brewster? I'm sorry to say that. I said. The agenda is set, except that Commissioner Brewster has requested that she be able to add something under item six. I would appreciate a few minutes of your time so that I can report some information. Um, yes, that has to do with the landfill. Oh. That I would like for this body to understand and know. And you'll survive. Mr. Shaver. Okay. No. Kelly, that'll be item number six under your name. Number seven? No, number seven is going to be Tracy. Okay. I'll be six. She'll be seven. Six. Yep. Okay, Rachel, come on up. Tell us what you got on your mind about the <laughs> Visitors Bureau. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. You just tell me when you want me to change. Okay. I, I thought Bo Carey covered this part in his he dissertation. Not. This I is not just about Loco 150. I think you did. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to come to you tonight to talk to you about how tourism has um, been impacted but also responded uh, during this first quarter. Um, all right. Um, here are some numbers. Um, for you to see about our occupancy trend, that is how full or not full, uh, in some cases, our hotels have been. Um, in April, you can see the significant drop. Uh, that was when we were uh, going into shutdown. Um, back up some for May, up June, July. We have been consistently uh, on the upward trend uh, and happy to report that in September, back up to 58.5%. Um, so hopefully those trends will continue. Um, we totally credit those to our marketing efforts of trying to uh, inform travelers that Loudoun County is a safe place to visit and that we are doing all that we can to make sure of that. 
also uh, year to date and the running 12 months. So we're not far off of where we were. We know that many of our friends um, are in not as good a place as we are. Um, specifically, Kingsport, they have a MetaView Meta Marriott up there, some of you may be familiar with. Big conference center, hotel, golf course. Um, they've been running about 10% uh, because there are no meetings happening. There are no conferences happening. So. Um, we know that Loudoun County was due to recover quicker just because of our geographic location being close to the interstate, giving those travelers um, that peace of mind that they could get back home quicker and easier because of our location. Some of the public relations activities that we've been working on uh, to date and during the first quarter, Loudoun County has been featured in 28 published articles. That's either online, in print, um, video results. Um, so 10 billion impressions is quite a large number. We had some features in on Yahoo and in Red Book magazine uh, that really pushed those numbers up. Um, and that total estimated value is the ad value that that would have, which is not, you know definitely not a number that we or anyone probably in this room could afford to uh, promote. Some of the articles that we've been featured in, uh, your guide to a safe, low-risk Halloween. Of course, we've been promoting uh, fall activities, um, also scary ones too, with Dead Man's Farm. Um, so that was published in the New Sentinel, but also republished by MSN News. Uh, just short of crazy, Southern Getaways with the Haunted Attractions. That was inspired by a newsletter that our public relations firm uh, sent out. Uh, and then also there's the Yahoo Life. Um, Wanna Buy a Lake Home, that was featuring Fort Loudoun, but also um, republished uh, by another entity of Yahoo's. Uh, marketing activities with our marketing communications firm, the High Road Agency, you can see the investments there. And so for each of those months, that's the amount that we were investing on search engine marketing. So when people were typing in Loudoun County, we wanted to make sure they were going to the right place. Uh, also, boosting uh, ads on Facebook and Instagram to drive them back to our website. Another thing that we have started doing with uh, the marketing agency and a company called Brochure Distribution is to make sure that our brochures are in welcome centers, hotels, and restaurants, attractions along the I-75 corridor. Yes, sir. So like a, ho a restaurant brochure, who pays for that brochure to be put out? Do we do it or does the restaurant do it? Or is it a list of all the restaurants that So it's our visitor guide. Just the visitor guide, okay. Yes, yes sir. Um, these are some examples of um, our, what we call a carousel ad on Facebook and Instagram. So the user, and you may or may not have seen these, of course we do want people to visit Loudoun County from outside of Loudoun County. Um, so they're being promoted to um, two areas, of course, outside. Um, but just to remind people, keep dreaming, keep fishing. Um, next, please. Keep exploring, so kayaking on Teleco Lake. Also, people are come, have been coming um, since the pandemic, it seems like, uh, to visit Loudoun County for re relocation purposes. They think that they want to live the smaller, quainter life and get out of the big city. Uh, this is the Belly Buster, Loco Belly Buster at Tommy's Grill on Grove. Um, that is our board member, Anit Patel, showing it off. Uh, Dead Man's Farm um, had an awesome year and um, made some very um, awesome efforts towards keeping their visitors safe. Um, I think that she'll probably report to us that it was one of their best years, and that's really uh, good for them since it's their second year in their Philadelphia location. It was absolutely Every night. She early October she had told me one night there was about 2,500 people out there and I know they did better than that on Halloween. So. Um, and it's promoting the East Lakeshore Trail, letting people know that there's enough space for everyone mm. to get out and explore. Yes ma'am. Uh, just some of the special events that we have um, helped with their marketing costs for this year and or coming up. The downtown Lenore City Car Show and Craft Fair, uh, we gave them $500. Uh, Fishing for Soldiers, which took place a couple of weekends ago, uh, they raised money for Smoky Mountain Service Dogs. Um, 
first of May or May the 8th, uh, South Central Tennessee Bass Nation. It's a high school bass tournament that will bring 150 to 200 boats. Uh, that was a sponsorship of $1,500. And then the Cabela's Bass Pro Shops King Cat uh, tournament that we have participated in the past, past few years. Uh, we will be doing that um, in coordination and cooperation with the city of Loudoun. Um, Who's the reigning champion for the celebrity? <laughs> oh, that's me. Barely. <laughs> Barely. It was close. It was so close. And he staked them out. Yeah. <laughs> Trace Trace them. Them. <laughs> the South Central Tennessee Baptist Nation, um, I know that that some of our high schools bass tournament, do you know, are our local high schools participating in? Yes. Yes, they are. Both our high schools? Lenore City. Lenore City. What about Green Bay? I'm sure those those kids have they, to qualify. They're all, yeah, they're all, well, as far as I'm aware, they're all members, but I, I'll check with them for sure. Oh, I was just curious. They was know. requesting boats for the guys, for boat drivers to take them out. Mm -hmm. So loud is for boat. Because they have um, three people per boat, so I guess a driver and then yes. two anglers. But Tennessee has one of the largest um, numbers of high school participants of any other state in the nation. God, I hope it down my head and alive. Uh, you may have also heard recently that we've been selected as a Tennessee River Town through the Tennessee River Line Partnership. Um, it was a program started within the Department of UT Agriculture and Landscape, Landscape and Art. I never remember that one. Um, but it's to promote a trail system along the Tennessee River, the 652 miles. Uh, Loudoun, Lenore City, Teleco Village, and Loudoun County all partnered together to uh, make this application, and more information on that will be coming soon. Uh, we were also privileged to get some CARES um, marketing dollars uh, from the state of Tennessee uh, as part of uh, COVID-related um, COVID marketing. Um, so you may have seen this billboard uh, just at exit 81 on I-75. Uh, it's a left-hand read as you're heading south um, to promote uh, the Sugar Land exit to encourage people to get off there. From there, they can then turn left or right to head into downtown Lenore City or Loudoun. And that's part of the COVID messaging for the love of Tennessee to travel safe. How much, yep. how much did the state give us for that? The state gave us 47000 Okay. Specifically related to COVID. Um, a lot of love. <laughs> and then uh, these are just some of the examples of the Loudoun County Strong Masks that I was handing out to you. I think there's one more. And then this was an ad that we did in Tennessee Home and Farm um, magazine. It's also including digital. Uh, there were some other print ads, um, streaming television that you may see if you uh, subscribe to any of those services. Um, we're also getting ready to apply for our tourism marketing grant, which is not related to COVID, um, but still with the state of Tennessee. And we have received that uh, for the past several years, and that will be for $20,000 for marketing for Loudoun County. Okay. Rachel, two things. Yes, sir. And I, I'm, I'm walking on eggshells right now, mm -hmm. but looking at Wall Street Journal yeah, and the Bloomberg business cool. report with the Shut possibility up. of a new president coming in if we have a complete lockdown that some are advocating for four to six to twelve weeks it could be devastation on the local economies nationwide are you getting anything from the people in nashville or throughout the southeast on anything such as this and it's just only reading right now. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't yet. Uh, we have a webinar on Wednesday where they might address that more closely. Um, as I said, we've been focused on the travel safe messaging so far. Um, you know, many of us did have to shut down back in April and May or late March, and we did the best we could with with what we were given. So. And that we'll just, we'll just take it one day at a time. Right, and that could have a devastation upon it. It, it, it absolutely would. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I just want you to know, Van Shaver is so disappointed he's not going to be able to run loco. <laughs> he's been running up and down Ford Road to get in shape, and Rodney can verify that. <laughs> but he'll be there next year. Rodney's running with me. Oh, okay. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. I thought it was a bicycle, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up, Jack Qualls. Tell us about it. Drive it. As you know, uh, this is for the commercial lot. I passed out a packet for everybody to review. And everybody who supports a lot are here in that. This is a project that he's looking at investing in our community. Uh, just start out a little bit about the history of Center 75. This property's been sitting there vacant uh, since it was purchased back in 99, 2000. Uh, this is a commercial lot in, in soybeans, various years uh, with an ag lease. Um, kind of Started talking to Gordon a while back, and uh, you know, Gordon Gordon's one of those guys that really wants to invest in Loudon. And, and the bottom line is, he, he wants to bring something that we all can enjoy. And, and part of that is, is what he's bringing to you tonight for, for your consideration is this drive in out at Center 75. Uh, as part of that, we have taken this uh, proposal to the city of uh, Loudon. Uh, they seem to be on board. Sounded like they was very interested in trying to make this a successful project for our community. So without further ado, I turn it over to uh, Gordon Widener and let him kind of explain uh, his concept and idea to move forward. Thank you, Jack. And Mr. Chairman and Commission members, uh, introduce my wife Susie and we're back there because we do all this together. But this is a, a concept I've, I've sort of dreamed about for quite some time is, is having a sort of a modern day drive in um, throughout our business career we we spent quite a bit of time in the jumbotron business <clears throat> we owned and operated jumbotrons in most of the major college football stadiums uh, in america and so that couple of years ago as i just always had this in my mind that if we did a project like this instead of a projector we would do a uh, a traditional jumbotron. The main reason is you can have events other than nighttime. You, you don't have to wait till dark to, to do things. So whether it's a church service or a, maybe a ball game or something, you could you can use it for multi-purpose graduations, whatever. Um, so today we're really just we're 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 pretty deep <laughs> in the exploration of this. Um, I hired this company, Anthony James Partners, to do. Uh, a lot of the uh, research for me have worked with them extensively over the years. Um, and so what you have before you is just sort of a snapshot of kind of what could be. Um, so if you go to the sort of the first slide other than the open page, you'll just see sort of what the guts of it would look like. It's a, you know, it's a traditional jumbotron you would see in, in a stadium. If you flip, you can just sort of start to see what it might look like in, in, you know, with, with cars and such. And then, and really the third page gives you what, what, what I sort of <laughs> want it to look like. It'll be, it'll be something like this or like the next page. We'll also, um, there'll also be a, a little stage in front of it so you can, you know, you can, like I said, you could use it for a graduation type thing or a concert or something that you could have a band below and then play it over a jumbotron. Um, it will also utilize an FM <laughs> signal. So, you know, if, if those of you who went to the, if you're as old as I am, you went to a drive-in, you had a little thing, you had a wire and you put it on your car, that, you know, you don't have to do that anymore. You can just have an FM signal to play the, the, um, the sound. We would have, however, a, a sound system for emergency purposes, just so you'll know. That's, uh, would be in the budget as well <coughs> and then you can see the piece of land that we've been talking to um, Jack and, and team about um, but it's uh, you know it's like I said it's a passion project it's something I think could be pretty neat for, for uh, drawing people to Loudoun County um, my wife and I are property owners here and, and uh, love the area and so just wanted to at least make you aware of something that we're consider so explore. Mr. Chairman, I would like to address the commission. I have had the opportunity of knowing Mr. Widener for quite some time. We've spoken in depth prior to the meeting Monday night and what he does, he does with first class. And I would fully support the recommendation to be brought forth for a vote at the next commission meeting. Jack, what are you asking of us on December seventh? 
So we'll be looking at is a is a land lease deal, uh, probably for a set time frame that would have the option to renewal. That's kind of what we're looking at at this point. Um, How much going to pay? Right now, we're just looking at trying to $2,400 a year. Right now, our land lease with our ag lease is $5,300 a year, and they're, they're farming 150 acres. This would essentially be 10 acres uh, parcel that's on the front. This does not include the 1.67 acres, the commercial lot on the corner uh, that's next to the uh, liquor store. What would be the option if, is, is there anything built into it that if, you know, after 20 plus years, somebody came in and said, we got to buy all this right now for hundreds of millions of dollars. Would a lease be like the ag lease, we could break it, or is it, is it going to have enough permanent stuff that we're, that it's there so forever? What, what you're looking at in front of you is something that could be removed at some point. Uh, what we're but but would it be if, if, if the yeah, I mean, land actually sold, could we get it back to sale for industrial? All, all we're going to be doing with the property, well, that property's not zoned industrial, but it could be. It's own commercial. And so what we'd be looking at doing is basically scraping the top of that land, putting down gravel base, which actually makes the property more valuable in the event that this, this doesn't become successful. <coughs> I hope it becomes successful, but the jumbotron would be able to be removed. Uh, the first couple of years, we're looking at doing some uh, portable pipe, uh, nice portable uh, restrooms with some food truck kind of amenities. Well, you uh, keep saying we. Are, are we affiliated or are you including you and him? Yeah, it, it, no, I'm just saying we. I, just, I didn't know if you were saying the city, the county was partnering in with this thing. Well, we hope you'll come to it, man. You know, we hope eventually you'll venture Well, that, that might be, but but yeah. just when you say we, I didn't know if you were talking like we were somehow partnering in this. You are partnering in with it. You're partnering in with him. But he's leasing land the land from us. That's correct. So who's paying the partnership? Yeah, yeah, who's going to pay for all stuff? Right. Just private him? Yeah, so I think the the idea is yes, that's the that's the short answer. Okay. However, as I said to the Loudon City Council, look any any break, any kind of opportunity, you know, we'll certainly take any kind of help we can get from the city or county to make this successful. So, in, in essence, when he says we, yeah, I, I I want it to be a community, you know, something that everybody supports and feels like they're a part of. So, but the, the investment for the technology, all that is, is all me in, okay. in, in my company. And you're, and you're looking at close to probably two, two and a half million dollar investment here. That Jumbotron is not cheap, folks. How big is it, 50 by 30? <clears throat> so I'm looking, there's two different sizes and, and so we'll come back with a more, I, I'll, you know, my next step is, is if you guys, if this is something that you think is worth looking at, I believe that Loudon City will, will will feel that way as well. Then I'll I'll have an engin engineering team that's going to come in here and really look at the at, at the site and decide on size and we'll so it'll be a lot more definitive when we, when we come back to you for a, a firm answer. But so what do you need from us? This is to see if you have interest in this project since your joint venture is with the city and the county. Well, you need a vote from us to 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 okay. lease the land. I will need a vote, yes, for you okay. to lease the land. Is that Mr. December White? or eventually? Uh, I'd love to come to it in December if we can get everything uh, nailed down in that time frame. Well, we'd always have a contract to look at before then. Yeah. Mr. Whitener, yeah. I'm the other District 1 representative, and I've met you before. My name is Kelly Brewster, right. and I, too, would like to tell you that I'm very much so and supportive of this. Right. I feel this, like this is going to be a good move for Loudoun and Loudoun City, too partner in make this very successful get something going out on center 75 so i just wanted to let you know that i think this is going to be a wonderful adventure it'll be year round i was so. going to say i agree with with david and, and uh, kelly i think you know based on your photos and of course we'd see some engineering drawings but i think you know a first class situation that can bring folks out of knoxville um, Monroe County, we could absolutely. I think it could be a real destination, <coughs> you know, a little bit kind of place for people to come from all around. Okay, Jack, put the details together. The next commission meeting where we can vote on anything is Monday, December 7th. But can get us contracts. You got to get everything to together ahead of time. I understand. I think he has to have that before Loudon City Council too. That's right, but it'll have to go in right. front of both of you. So, yeah. if not, I would ask that we could push it to the first of the year. If that's okay, it would be January. Whatever's convenient. Any, okay. any, other, any other questions or?
Thank you for your interest. No. Thank you for looking at what I'm Yes, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, do you have any heartburn with this? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, a lot of the city council was 100% behind it. Um, we talked to Mr. Whitener several times, and um, we're just the same as you. We decided he's looking at Loudon. So it was unanimous. Council Bruce was here. For what, I mean, it was is unanimous. I was so, just going to pick on Tim sitting there. I go to the mayor first. You have any heartburn? No, I want you to be my date for the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> now that get a no from me. <laughs> Jeremy, make sure that's in the paper. <laughs> I, got, I have a question, not related to you, but Mr. Qualls, why he's here, he's a hard man to find. I'm confident that mine and Commissioner Hurley's name left off your email list is an oversight, but do what you want to do with her, but add me back to your email list. I have to get it second hand. Secondly, I asked David about this earlier, and I think I understand, but we got we got real behind tonight. I saw in the paper and those the loud this, you all welcome to go. This is this is coming. Jeff, you stand still a minute, Jeff. Okay. The loud IDB board was having a meeting, and when I see IDB board meet, Thank you, I Ryder. break out in a sweat, I get scared right. to death because I figure somebody's fixing to give away tax dollars. David said it didn't have anything to do with that. It's got something no, to do sir, with it utilities. Do, it, yes, it has to do with utilities. And basically what they're doing is uh, they're taking money from one side of the shop and putting it on the other side of the shop for in, for infrastructure is what they're doing. That's correct. Right. It's illegal, but that, that's, I don't I don't care if you do that as long as you're not. Yeah, the attorney says property. Property. Like about We're life, going to get so, water. Yeah, sure. Teleco Village is going to be equal. You, you may want to check with LCUB if that's legal. Okay. I got nothing here. I just want to make sure we won't give away more property tax. That's, that's what it's about. Any more questions for me? Why you have me? <laughs> no, put this together because you either got to make the seventh or January. Well, I think or this is good for our community. I really appreciate it. January either. Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you, Jack. Give me a holler tomorrow or something like that. Right. Sir, sir. Call hey, me buddy, too. call me Sean. too, then, Jack. If you're calling him. Okay, okay. Mr. Chairman. The <laughs> board committees that are up are the Chamber of Commerce Board Directors and the Visitors Bureau Board. Uh, you're on your chamber, correct? Yeah, I'm in the chamber. And Harold, are you on visitors still, correct? Still yes. Board. I'm still on board. And if you all are content, I'd love for y'all to see you to serve on that capacity. I don't have a problem. Are you I'm still the good? chamber. It's a you still good? You still good for serving on Visitor Board? This this say yes. We can cut down all that. I like to serve. There board. you go. Sure. There I you support go. Harold Duff on the Visitor Board. I wished that these commissioners would see the value of learning what the visitors board is all about and we could rotate uh, rotate this so that we wouldn't uh, have uh, uh, you want me to take uh, his turn uh, well, <laughs> this is what i'm talking about the interruptions and uh, uh, That's why people I like that our say stuff against it so i uh I don't know if the Visitors Bureau could survive Mr. Shaver and my husband on the same board. <laughs> they <Good evening>, made. <laughs> but if, but if they are for a little bit, you that would be an incoming. Do, what, what, you, what was your question? If you're willing to continue, that would be my recommendation, Commission. I'd like for you to continue. Sir. I'm willing to do it. If none of the rest of them don't want to do it. We appreciate your service, sir. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Uh, other than uh, sure. we've got a couple of Eagle Scouts that got their retained Eagle Scouts uh, badge on them. For, know, Eagle Scout Award. Rank, I guess right. Award. It's an award. They're going to be here on the seventh, uh, just to introduce them, Commission, as well as we'll do Dr. Guider's proclamation on the seventh as well. Uh, legislators couldn't make it for the day, and so we'll do that at the first meeting. And uh, please, Commission. Well, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Those will all be on December 7th agenda under your name. Okay, Commissioner Shaver, tell us about the old courthouse. All right, this is this is a pretty big deal. I think we all know there's no money to build anything right now. Someday down the road, hopefully we'll be able to do something. We all know what's happening at the courthouse. Our decision not to build says, says we're moving back in. I try to get by there about... Uh, couple of times a month anyhow just to watch the progress and I'll be honest it's been pretty astounding what they've done there it's just I, I, I don't even know how you did it I don't know who all's been there in the last 
months or so, but right now it is nothing but a skeleton on the inside. The studs is all you see. The plaster is all gone. Walls in many places are gone. Uh, Steve and I were down there last Friday, I guess it was, and uh, the discussion is, can we do anything? We've heard them say, the insurance says, put it back exactly like it was. There are things we can change. There are interior walls that can be adjusted to make the courthouse space we have much more usable than it was prior. You understand when it was built, it was every office in the county was in that building. So now there's much fewer offices. Upstairs you have this gigantic courtroom, and, and I'm going to recognize Steve right here in a minute, but he thinks it's, it, that the judges will want to keep one big courtroom. But on the front of the building where the old law library was, that was nobody ever used it for anything. We, it's all movable. All those walls are not load-bearing anything, so we can do a lot on the front end if we wanted to. Jury rooms, whatever. But downstairs in the main part down there, there are certain petition walls that are just there. When I hear the, and Susan of course isn't here, but when I hear the term, put it back exactly like it was. Well, what it was, was the 1870s through the 1950s plaster, lathe, massive, massive walls of thickness that we don't need anymore. What my hope would be is that we can meet with the insurance company. I understand Susan's there and Buddy's there. I would like to have an insurance representative come and say to us what they would be willing to do to work with us. And if we can save them some money in certain steps, can we apply that money to doing other things? I don't know if we, right now the people that are there are about done, is what the guy told us last Friday. They were starting to put the brick wall back in that one wall that blew out on the courtroom side, and that's all they had left. And he said, then we're done. I said, well, who's doing the roof? He said, we don't do the roof. He said, that's going to be the contractor that comes in. These people were just restoration. So I don't know where we're at with the next round of contractors. I don't know what's happening, but if we were going to make any changes, now is the time as far as the cost of doing it. To think about letting the insurance company build it all back exactly like it was, then think about changing it is just kind of, that'd just be kind of ridiculous. If we're going to do it, now's the time. I think Susan's been asking for us to do that for the last month. Well, Susan has told me months. repeatedly we couldn't touch anything. But I want to recognize also Steve. Been saying if we're going to do anything, we need now's to do the it time. now. Steve, come up and kind of. Once it's built, you're going to incur. So enormous expenses. Expense. There is nothing Change. there now, but but I mean it's the pure skeleton walls, right, Steve? I mean right. it's yeah. it's nothing there but wood studs from 1870. And Steve and his crew and the judges are the people that have to work in it. So if y'all remember right, the band covers pretty well where where I'm coming to you tonight. But um, you remember back years ago when the court clerk's office was in there and the successor property and all those different departments were inside the courthouse. Each individual department had basically is what is a 15 by 18 room maybe? Probably. And um, before the fire, my office, four, four of my staff members were all working in one of those rooms. 15 by 18 room. The public came into the room with a, with a counter space there. And then we had four ladies working there behind the counter, just on top of each other. Of course, with COVID going on, you know, this year and, and all the precautions that we're taking with it, you know, it's um, just, just I've, I've really been heightened about going back in the courthouse like it is right now. I just don't think it's uh, smart for our operations, for the day-to-day -day operations, for dealing with the public and public use of the, the building. So I would um, like to look at us possibly doing some changes to the office area. You know, when you come in the front of the building, the main lobby, um, I don't see any changes to it. To it. The, the stairwells and all that are, are um, just stay the same. But as far as the office area themselves, I would like to see us update those. Of course, we're looking at, you know, restrooms need updated, make them ADA accessible. Well, the insurance um, should take it, return them back to ADA accessible. Do what? Insurance should pay for them to be 
the ADA accessibility right. rebuilding. I think so. I we think hope. So. It brings back up the code as yeah. well as ADA compliance. Yeah. So there's a few changes I think myself, Alicia and I, also the judges would like some input on maybe altering the, the plans a little bit. Uh, Lisa, uh, Susan's been good to work with as far as dealing with the insurance company. And um, I know she's been in discussions with them and one of her emails to me back in August the 24th of this year for one of their reps said, the easiest way to answer the question regarding making changes to the floor plan is that travelers will pay to put the courthouse back to spec at the date of loss. So the county is free to make changes, but, not, but any cost related to those changes over and above estimated costs and restoring the courthouse back to pre-loss state would be out of pocket to the county and not covered cost to travelers. So, so if it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars to return it to what it was, but three hundred thousand dollars to what you want, we owe the other fifty thousand. Right, right. Or if to return it back to what it was, it's two hundred fifty thousand, and what we want to do would be one hundred fifty thousand. How could the insurance object? They wouldn't give us the difference. Would be my guess. Well, I, I don't want the difference. We, we want to be able we to. Just want to we just want to change the interior footprint of what it was, and we need to tell them again. We don't need three inches of, of steel lathe and plaster walls. We can go back with sheetrock walls. I mean, this is 2021 and things like that. So I would love to work with the insurance company to save them money and then to get us a better footprint, a more workable footprint inside the building. Now, as far as the upstairs in the courtroom, I think you said the other day when, when you and Mike and I were there, that the judges are probably one going to keep the big courtroom. But you've got these little rooms on the side. Coming back out where the law library was, I think you were the one that said it would be the great place to have the jury, uh, a jury room back here instead of. I mean, they were in. They're they're in a tiny room now, a tiny tiny room. But I guess what we need to do is to say to Buddy right now, not not in January or February, we need to meet with the insurance company. We need to hear what they their flexibility and their ability to work with us on this would be. <laughs> and if we do incur a little cost with it, a little, I say, it would probably be money well spent to get it back so it's workable. I'll be happy to set it up. I'm just yeah. saying, but we've got to be very, very weary. And I agree. It, it's not functioning, functional for our purposes in modern times. Sure. But we have to be very careful dealing with insurance. Well, so that's why we need them we here. We can get a commitment and a solid written commitment yes. from insurance. Get us oh, well. whoever can, like that guy that said we're paying for it no matter, get us the man that can make decisions and, and make them real that we can ask these questions to. See if you can't get a hold of whoever the man is that can really negotiate and discuss it. Because I, like I said, I'll, I'm all in favor of saying the insurance company, saving the insurance company some money if we can. So That's fine. Where do, where do you come up with a figure of $150,000? That was just, that was just a high That's pet. Not, uh, that had okay. nothing to do with anything. Does, does that mean we're, more than that, we're yeah. going to get to keep the outside entrance for the prisoners, the fire escape metal steps up to the courthouse? <laughs> what we would hope is that they'll is come. historical. I'd, I'd hate to lose Well, it'll it. stay. It's got to be a fire escape, but we hope we can bring them in the front and go in that way on the side that nobody uses instead of going up the fire escape. That's I've never understood that when that nobody uses that other side anymore. But that's the sheriff's decision. We don't get to make that call. That's up to him. One positive of COVID is that we're using Zoom more now, so chances are we might need use Zoom more than we would for prisoners instead of bringing them down to the courthouse from the justice center. Actually, Zoom with them. Yeah, wasn't there on the screen. I didn't have to I mean, do their, so do their, their arrangements and stuff. Arrangements and everything by Zoom. Which means we need to update the technology right, right. Yeah, within done. the courthouse because we have no really exactly. good technology. And again, if we can save with the insurance company, and they, if they would be willing to say, okay, let's pick that hypothetical number again, the $250,000 it'll cost to fix X, but what we want to do is going to make the 150000 can we have that fifty thousand? I want to ask them that. I don't know what they'll say. I do. They'll I don't. Say I no. don't know. I don't know what they'll say because they obviously they were fools when they stood here and said we'll put it back exactly like it was. That was crazy. Everybody now knows it should have been level to the ground. That. But what, that's, what's happened up there is unbelievable. But that. Or can I make an observation about the the head man of the insurance company in Nashville came. Stood right here, 
and said the insurance policy says that we will fix it back like it was. And somebody asked the question about that. He said, they, that's what we could do if that's what we wanted to do at our cost. So isn't that what we heard here from uh, 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 the man or am I? I didn't hear I think, that. I think based well, on conversation hinges on whether or not insurance will work with us. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think based on that email that Steve just read, but I think there's room for changes as long as it doesn't cost more than the original. I want to hear, hear that from that's somebody. That's what I want to hear. Somebody that can actually say that. But I hope in this process that we're not just totally thinking about personnel. I hope we're thinking about records. Yeah. And historic record storage, and the things that go along with that, because it's, it's, yeah. it's a total embarrassment to me as a representative of this county to, when that fire started to walk downstairs and see our historic records floating in the water in a stupid place. Y'all see the basement now. So I mean, we have to address those think, issues. If we're going to have this conversation, we need to have the whole conversation. Yeah. I and think you've got to get this part of it. Well, I think, you know, something that Kelly talked about a little bit, I think we need to seriously discuss, this is kind of off-subject here, but not off-subject, storage units behind yeah. the county office. But we can't we store can't. historic records no, in storage we units behind the But that's, behind gonna, that's gonna free up a lot of space it's it's where we could. And, and we've been working on that idea of doing storage units for just regular records where and I would have Steve's, a that, all, Steve's um, office would have a unit, garage unit, and that's yours, yourself, and each office holder would have theirs to store those records. And um, we've been working on some prices and coming up with a few things so that we can look at doing that. And that would free up some more space. If we take some of the stuff that was in the courthouse, and when I say some of the stuff, you had that one room right across from your main door that was nothing but just shelf after shelf after shelf after shelf of documents. That's a big room. Well, now that there's nothing in it, it's a big room. Then we had soil conservation in the other corner where the spiral staircase is. The spiral staircase needs to go away. And that's another office that could be... Well, that's Why would we need no. to take away the spiral staircase? Well, it was stuck in many years. Nobody can't use it. It's not ADA compliant. I mean... I, I, that office. Yeah, it takes up a huge amount of that office just to go down into the dungeon down there. But but again, all that's dependent on what the insurance will do is, even if the insurance says nothing, we can't do nothing, I think it still is gonna behoove us to consider some changes right here. To change major walls will be very, very expensive. As we look, these two main corridor walls right here support the whole courthouse. Well, you can't change that. Well, you can. I mean, but it would take some major steel girder. It can all be changed. But this, what we're talking about right now, the interior is going to be real simple. Those walls in his office and across the hall, they're, they're just dangling there. They're not holding anything. What's going to have to happen, any way it goes, we, do you know if we've already hired a contractor or any engineer, anybody on the next phase of this thing? Even ar architects at first. All of our people are in place. Who are they? Who's, who's the guy the, down here didn't know. Who's the guy up here didn't know. Johnson and Galen, isn't it? Well, they're yeah, and then the contractors are, now I'm assuming they, they've been working on stuff throughout it, through the phases. So is it the now, they were originally thought they were for phase one. Well, the people have worked the now say they're... assumed they were phase one and phase two. Well, this is a subgroup. You just talked to us well. About I've got their names in an email. I, maybe, I just, maybe they should come next meeting. Too. I just don't want to see in the next 30 you know, they, days. They've asked for people to come to the meetings and nobody's ever showed too. So but I don't know anything there. about it. I don't it. think the meetings, <laughs> did the meetings start this back before up? before all this started. They, they do Zoom now. It's all, it's all Zoom. Okay, so we haven't ever gotten the link or anything for the Zoom meetings. Why don't you just set up, a, why don't just set that we can advertise and have a call meeting for yeah. the county commission to meet with them whenever, as soon as we can. As soon as possible. Just whatever the calendar says, we have to know, what is it, how many days? Seven ten days. days. Ten, ten days. Look at it, ten days, not make the notification to come and meet. And that's right. the only thing on the agenda is to meet with the insurance guy about what we can and cannot do. I mean, I agree with Van. Right now is the time. If we're going to have an opportunity to do something, you got to do it. Have, have any of y'all been in there in the last 60 days? 
If you're I've not, y'all in. stop by any day. It's open. They're real cool about it. Yeah, help yourself, walk in, look. I've not been in since we waded through the wreck. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable what they've done. It's not as extreme. There's not a whole lot of dangerous activity going on, so it's not as Just watch the holes inside. in the floor. You might huh. fall through a hole in the floor. But... I, don't, I don't want to disturb the historic history of that courthouse. From outside, you won't. From inside, it'll be very minimal. Uh, yeah. You've got these vaults, these gigantic concrete vaults that... that what is there, three different ones? Four. four. There's four different. Now, they're there. You're not going to budge those things. They're there. So everything has to work around those vaults. But it's so bizarre to see them exposed. They were just built into the walls. You didn't see it. But now here's these big giant vaults just sitting throughout the building with their big, ma massive steel doors on the front of it. It's Stop in and see it if you get a chance. It's really something to see right now. Anyhow. I, I have one last question. Are those going to stay? Yes. Yes. I have one question, Mr. Player. We've not authorized any money to be spent for phase two. And the question I had, Tracy, you sent me the stuff and all of the expenditures to date, and I'm going to, off the top of my head, 2.7 million or something like that. You had temporary and permanent, I think is what you had your two calls. But there was no separate tolls at the bottom. Do you know, do you know how much exactly we've spent on the permanent? And they were separated for insurance purposes. Yes. And I, you I got them on spreadsheet. It'd be easy to pop them at the bottom. Okay. See, I would love to know because the 2.7 includes loud rent, uh, uh, paper cleanup, book drying. It's, it's got everything in it, and I can't separate them. It's just a PDF, what I've got. That's another thing about storage <coughs> units. We, it may not be a bad idea if we either vote it up or vote it down because when they give us the keys back to this courthouse, all of our... We will be spending $30,000 a year for storage units, at the, or not storage units, but for Real storage sports. where Steve has rented the bank building and Lisa has rented the bank building we'll and along with the old. other one, yeah. we will be up to yeah. thirty. It will start costing us $30,000 a year. When we're we a long, in, long way from that. We've we got see, plenty of time to fix that. Well, when we start tweaking and things, we need to be very careful that they might have actually earned us some good stewardship from the yeah, We might. We also want to be careful because we don't want the insurance company to up and say, oh, okay, so you start doing things, so we're going to back out and not pay any more on... When, when you say storage, do you mean like a metal prefab building that's climate controlled? Just with like a regular concrete? storage like a, building that... Brick, uh, or a brick on the front, center block building. Was fixing fixing this this inside of this building, at, obviously it's going to be higher expense, does that do away with building the new... Building is that thing a, a thing of the past now? Oh, we're just going to move into this. Uh, we'll have to use uh, it for a while. 150 year old building. I think we'll have to use it for a while, and I think that one time when we readdress. But as far as we, no, if, we, if you'd have told me we were where we were going to be financially when all this COVID stuff hit, I'd have swore it down your line and played me for a fool. We have ended up a whole lot better than what we were, so I think you know. I, don't, I think it's on the it may not be on the immediate horizon. We don't have any road. spare pennies to pay debt service on anything right now. To answer your question, if we wanted to build a building in the separate, a new building like we talked about before, seven million, ten million, whatever, there would have to be a property tax increase to cover that at this point in time. As Buddy said, we're still we're still two years away. We're, we're two years away, my guess, on the courthouse well, building. Mr. Chairman. There's nobody yes. going to build it free. I my, mean, you're going to have no, to pay for it. Well, one of my concerns would be is when we start down this road that we not, like I said, if we are, if there are going to be plans for a new courthouse in the future, I'd hate to see us start investing a lot of money in the old courthouse oh, right now. We'll see. I agree. Well, I agree I think like, even if we get a new annex going, exactly you know, what my I would love to see maybe the veteran service officer or codes and planning move into the old courthouse, something where it's still functional. Because the, uh, let's don't fight that fight tonight. Well, I mean, we're no, but I, as long as we've got somebody in the courthouse, I don't. We're going to give the old courthouse to the city loud and let them make a museum out of no, it. No, we're going to give the old to the justice yeah, sell it to you. I give it to them. Make it something where people are entertaining because they can't sit in. That's right. Okay, buddy, I'm, I'm going to ask you, Mr. Mayor.
if you would get Susan and yourself to call somebody at the insurance company, ask them to join us either at a special call and answer these questions or do it at a commission meeting. But I think there's things that need to be addressed. I think Steve makes a valid point. And I also agree with Van, and I'll probably have to take a pill for that, but by the time you put it together the way it was, and then you start to remove it again, Van is exactly right. It'll cost us a fortune. Now, if we have a, mind, Susan's out for the 23rd. She had a medical procedure. Well, okay. We have the mayor. You can make phone calls. But I'll get the Let's don't wait hurt. on Susan. Let's she'll she'll have to right. zoom on Mr. Chairman. She'll be the one handling all the change orders. You just call the man. We don't need to zoom. Call the man. Ask him to come and see us. Yeah, but I'm not going to exclude Susan from any comments. No, don't exclude. No, I don't want to exclude nobody. Just call the man. And see see when Mr. Come. Chairman. Go ahead. Address this to the mayor. Yes, if sir. we, if we, I, I suggest, strongly suggest that it be a special call meeting, be advertised appropriately. It doesn't have to be at six o'clock in the evening. It can be whenever we want to set it. And it be only, the only item on the agenda would be the insurance company and the courthouse. I can he do that. Call me. I don't have the authority to call. But I'll, I'll, I'll call. advertise I, it. I, Henry, give us I, think you need, I think we need to look to listen to the tape of what the man said when he came here and spent time with us telling what they would do. It's on tape. <laughs> Just listen to it. I make a motion we adjourn. No, uh, we have more. <laughs> buddy, if you'll do that. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. I'll do the special call meeting because I can do that. Oh, we still got Tracy. I was about to leave the most. No, no. We no. still got Kelly. You got Kelly next. Oh, yes. But before we get the solid waste, I'm just going to address something. Last meeting, we spoke about getting Bob Bowman. So I met with Buddy in his office and Bob Bowman, and I asked him directly, what happens with the solid waste? The interlocal agreement was drawn up between Loudoun, the North City, and Loudoun County. Gave the authority to the Solid Waste Commission. They have the authority to make the decisions. So with that in mind, I'm just going to tell you the groundwork. Now, this interlocal agreement goes back a ways, long before, well, maybe Harold was on it, but long before a bunch of us were on the commission. So with that in mind, Kelly, tell me what you got on the solid waste. OK. <clears throat> Oh, wait till Sarko gets back here. I'm ready. He's right here. Fire up He's wheel. fired up here more about garbage. Well, I think he should be. Okay. What I'm going to hand out to you today is I'm going to explain this to you. But what I would like to ask for this commission to think about and really evaluate some information that I found in my research on customer rates and some of the things that have occurred. Can you you said customer there? rates, tipping fees, I believe is what it is. Right, Larry? Yeah. Like 28.50 a ton is what they told me today. Okay. In my one ton truck. Can you pass this there? I never know. I'm going to take a I need I missed I missed there you go. He's, they got one. I need Oh, Bud. Oh, Tracy, give us another one. Kelly. Tracy. I love she does, but Buddy asked. Okay. All right, something I want you to take a look at is, of course, we are a stakeholder. And as a stakeholder, if you will look at our rate, I want you to go to the very top, and it says three stakeholders for 2019. This was our rate. It was $22.38. In 2020, it went to $22.40. Well, 
if you go on to look, I want you to take a look at Santex customer rate for 2019 down below there. Two very two very important customers is Rome County Recycling Center. If you look 2019, their rate was $24. Waste services was $20.53. Go on to look at Santex customer rate for 2020. Rome County Recycling Center now has no rate and is not reported. Where'd it go? Chris Morris is working on getting it as we speak. Well, not as we speak, but he's had a phone call into their recycling director. We're supposed to be gathering up numbers, tonnage, and bills. And should have a solid number. Okay. I can give you some understanding as to where that rate has gone and where that Rome County Recycling Center has gone. Rome County, as you know, does not have their own landfill. They haven't in several years. They haul their trash. Where does it come? It comes over here to Loudoun County. So if you'll notice, in 2020 also, Waste Services is still $20.53. Waste Services is now hauling Roan County trash into the Matlock Bend landfill. That's below our stakeholder rate. Our stakeholder rate is $22.40, which, which is a difference of $1.87. Yes, Henry is right. The Solid Waste Commission makes the decisions for Santec, but the Solid Waste Commission cannot set these rates, okay? What I would like for this commission to consider is putting, just to consider and think about and evaluate what I have here, is putting a $2 surcharge on all out-of-county waste coming into the landfill. And here's the reasons why. Rome County trash is at its highest ton volume now than in the last seven years. Ton volume right now is 25,994. We are not even through the fourth quarter. That's just for the first three, qu three quarters. And it's not complete. If you put a $2 surcharge on that, that would result right now in a gain of $51,989. That's basically what we're losing, too. The Solid Waste Commission is losing that. Because Waste Services is bringing that trash in at a lower rate. Think about it. Let's just, let's just have Waste Services take our trash down there. We get it at a lower rate. I have a question. Can I finish up one second? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you okay. had a dramatic pause. I didn't realize. Sorry. <laughs> Santec can set the customer rates. And the Solid Waste Commission can do nothing. We can't. I don't think that's right. That's right. It is right. And the surcharge is ours. My question would be, can you set a surcharge on one group of people? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> My second question would be, has any, have y'all had this conversation with Santec representatives? And are they okay with this? We had a conversation asking <laughs> for... You know they're not. <laughs> they shouldn't care. It don't change them for them. We had a conversation asking for the Rome County rate. And we're told I'll have to get back with you. But what about this $2? Did they give any indication what they... I mean, again, they're, they're not going to care about $2. It don't cost them nothing. One of the things in this research that Kelly and I have been doing is the contract is written, as Ms. Hunter alluded to, on tonnage, 
it's written based on the 360 days a year. The landfill is only open five and a half days. And when you open that up, That's you can get 270. And they, you know, TDEC, I think, measures on 273. So Miss Hunter was right all along. And in, uh, the calculations that was used here, when this come up, was for the fact that the contract is written that Semtec can and will establish the tipping rate. Well, as the, as the landfill, the garbage comes in from other counties, we are standing at about 17% of out-of-county garbage. If you decide to do something with a surcharge on the out-of-county, I'm sure that it's going to be a legal battle because we're infringing on their business model. Now, again, I don't agree with the contract that's written. Our contract uh, addendum that we were trying to push through did take us to get through, but in the same token, other stuff has come alive. The, the fact that if you measure 360 days, when you compare it to 270, we were one year at 293 tons a day into that land, uh, 300, no, 800, I'll give you that. 800, 800, 800 yes, 923 a day for one solid year based on the extended contract saying 30, 30 days to a, a month. So it's really confusing to how it is, but the contract is written on totally their benefit. Mm -hmm. Sure it is. Totally yeah. their benefit. We've got seven more years to get out of this and without we, a legal battle. And one of the things that I'm trying to show you here is they're bringing in that out of county waste and right now run county is at its total highest volume right now well i think so I heard, it's increasing i think i heard larry say though uh we're going to have a legal battle with a two dollar surcharge well you now, probably will now how much he sense doesn't does it know, we don't know that 100 well, why, why would y'all talk to santec about this okay we did talk to that santec and, and this is what santec has they backed up to go regroup this last meeting so we need to wait to hear back from what you all do well we did get one response from them that said if you try to change anything in the language of the contract at the this point or the addendum or the amendments um, that all negotiations, everything well, the whole deal, is off the table. Yeah. Larry, fix the whole deal. Yeah. Yeah. We are they won't put and it's it time okay. now to possible I'll 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 consider, consider an RFP for other services besides Tantec. And then you'll quit saying The one thing I would say to that, Mr. Gears, is that we've got seven, seven years left. Yes. 2027. Yes. Same way with the, the deal, as long as this commission and the county are comfortable in backing up the liability of, of uh, signing the bonds to carry it through. My thoughts now, and this is personally my only thoughts, not hers or any other the commissioners, is set up. Unless we want to do something about the surcharge if the, if the com county commissioners decided to do something about that. But this goes to show you, as these things were developing with a new company coming on board, they want to hit the maximum. I'm telling you right now, they want to fill that landfill up. And they will fill it up based on the loophole numbers that the way the contract is written. Mm -hmm. It will happen. For my part, Larry and Kelly, I don't care how much garbage they put in a day. I don't care if they put 800 tons a day. I don't care if they put eight tons a day. I don't care what the tipping fee is. It doesn't matter. Getting rid of that bond to me is the biggest possible thing. Loudon doesn't worry about that because Loudon's not signing for it. Lenore C doesn't worry about it. Lenore C's not signing for it. Santec's over here fixing to be taken over by another company. And for the next seven years, once a year, whoever sits in that seat has to sign this bond, and it says on it, the taxpayers of Loudoun County will be responsible 100% for this landfill if something goes sideways. 
There is no bad thing Santex ever done in my, in my book that would prevent me from signing a contract extension that eliminates that bond. That's how big a deal that part is to me. If we get other little cherries with it, so be it. But that I, I, nobody doesn't seem to understand how big a deal signing this bond is. And nowadays in the world we live in, anything's possible. And George Miller, Doyle Art, Estelle Heron, Buddy Bradshaw, and Proud Long Buddies here, seven more years, somebody's got to keep signing that. That is so monstrously huge. I can overlook any indiscretions they've had to get rid of that bond. Well, but to there's no, that. it doesn't matter how many times they sign for bond, there's no guarantee that they'll, that they'll come through with it or that the county won't get drugged into a lawsuit because it's that's our landfill. That's right. That, that it's, it, that's possibly that right. It's an insurance burns. company then. It's, 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 will be paid if they default. If there's a lawsuit, and, do you and you're sitting here saying that, oh, we're just going to, to sue Santec, Loudoun County will be home free. And that's, I don't think that would, and I'm just, again, that's just me. I don't think that would ever happen. You can sign all the, the bonds bond you want The bond is an insurance to. that will cover it. It is. Nobody's suing anybody. When they, what when, happens with just the insurance Just like the school company. system, though, uh, Van, when you was on the school board, did they just sue one teacher? They sued the teacher, the principal, the school board, the superintendent, and the bus driver, I guess, that brought him there. But I, I, and then I'm, what happened? The I'm insurance just, company <laughs> settled for a lower amount. Well, and I mean, that's what's going to Y'all are talking about things that are be out beyond anybody's imaginability. That's if you buy insurance, if you buy car insurance and you have a wreck, you expect to call insurance comes like, I had a wreck, I need my car fixed with other people's car fixed. The bond is an insurance is what it is. And, and this is a company, a quarter million dollars a year, somebody has to pay, Santec will have to pay or whomever, and that would be their insurance policy against that landfill being closed. The only thing I was like, he, I don't care if we sit here on seven, but the county taxpayers are on the hook for every day. They are going to fill that thing up uh, by hook or crook, make every dollar they can make off of on it, and then when it's filled, the people in Loudoun County are going to be sitting here, well, we need another landfill. <laughs> no, we'll never need another landfill. We need another landfill. When That's that exactly cost, what they're going to want. If, who? Who's going to... Who's going to want landfill in seven years? Loudoun County's going to want it. They're going to need It's cheaper faster. to haul it to, Ch to Chestnut Ridge in Knoxville. What's Way cheaper. What's to Chestnut Ridge in seven years? So be full. Rest yeah. Chestnut Ridge is supposed to be on to like 2050-something. Yeah, well, it's this huge. extension, this permit extension, would put us out there. Their capability 32. is 2035 to 2038. And there is enough room for an extended, I think, 10 years was in our, some of our requirements. You all need to get the answers to the questions of whether or not the $2, we can even do it. I've already heard you say, Santex says, the contract extension's over if we do the $2. No, so, I did not say the $2. They said if we change any of the language, we, all we asked for- Would the $2 for, be a no, change? No. Well, wait a minute. All we asked for was, could we consider a, a place to dump the brush and all that? And the other thing was to change the number measure from date. the measure date from the 30 days to the 22 point. From 365 right. to 270. Yeah. So what did they say? They said if you change that or you try to change and want to add in a place to put the brush, all contract negotiations are off. So back to the solid waste. What are y'all going to do? Go back to negotiations in my book. We've been at it for five years, watched another five years. But why <laughs> why should they be letting waste services bring trash in here? If we put the two dollar yes. tipping fee on, what if waste services goes to Chestnut Ridge? The yeah. issue comes down to what's Kevin no Stevens say? Which is off the money. Can he get it done? Kevin Stevens is doing his homework right now. Uh, so, in, in a conversation I had with our attorney. And uh, Mr. Brewster is Friday. Uh, is that we need to do the research on and be prepared to set out at the next meeting? Because their official word to me uh, in our last meeting was, "We'll get back to." You. So we're premature on the two dollars. We, we are pre this. This two dollars 
It's pretty Don't even take it into consideration at this point in time. We can't, and I will not recommend that the commission do it, okay? Well, you didn't read Kelly's letter because it says, I would like the commission to consider this. I, I, I heard her say that as a commissioner, but as a solid waste commission, I can't say that, and I will not say that. But what I will tell you is the lost revenue that is being of the out-of-county waste that Santec is hauling in is cutting in its own fire for Rome County to get a $20 and something uh, tipping fee through Santec and Loudon is paying 22 well, Let me ask County. you this. I wouldn't argue that. Uh, well, let me ask you this just on a business model. Do they bring in more than Loudon does? Loudon They're hauling County. in 38% of what goes in that landfill. Is that more than us? More than the stakeholders? Yes. So is it a prorated amount of money? The more you bring, the less you pay? Yes. I mean, if that's, 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 that's a very smart that's business model. Oh, it is. <laughs> it's just the loophole. Now, granted, that's only started as far back as I can see in the numbers that Kelly's provided back to January of this year. Last year, this makes three. Well, Roan County was on the hook with their quantity for the last uh, three years. It showed up in the report. It don't show up no more. Well, I think we're here waiting to hear from you all as to what to do. I'm hearing you say not two dollars. Hear Kelly say two dollars, and we don't even know if we can do the two dollars. So I think we can do the two. I think that's well within purview. Not on just one customer. And before you say that, Larry says not to do the two dollars. I didn't say that. Larry said that. Larry needs to call. To qualify what he's saying, he's not saying don't do the two dollars. It's exactly what. It's exactly word for word. What that is. It's premature. It's premature. There this you time, go. Okay, for what Kelly is talking about, in my opinion, in my opinion of it. But I have a real problem with Loudoun County not getting the best rate going into the landfill because that was what the landfill was established for, Loudoun County. I agree. I don't, don't bring it out of county. That. No. That's fine, but not at a rate. We should work. have whatever the lowest rate offered is. We should always have it. We, we own the landfill. But it sounds like you're not being supportive of what I'm saying either. Yeah, and that makes me feel like you've just sold me out. Sold you out with the... Did I run over your toes? Yes, oh. you did. And you and I are going to have a conversation. So, <laughs> so, so what happened at the last Solid Waste Commission meeting? I, I, I really thought we would hear the contract since you was there. Mr. Brewster, you're our representative. What what actually happened? Did you table it? Did you, what, what was the story? I think all this is what happened, didn't it? All this come to light. You asked about, <clears throat> well, first of all, I was unable to attend that meeting. You weren't here? No. Okay. I did not uh, know that. My two cents were uh, this gentleman I right hear should be the chairman of Solid Waste. How do we I take care of that, Mr. Myers? <laughs> <laughs> and there How do we needs take to, care of that? There's at least, and Mr. Solid Waste has to do that vote. That's Solid Waste. Mr. Field. That'd be like Solid Waste coming here and telling us who's going to be chairman. We, we, we vote on that position every year. I have no confidence that Mr. Field is working in the best interest of the folks in Loudoun County at all. I, I think there's more uh, thing, no questions to ask about his performance than anybody. At least with Larry, I feel like he has a genuine concern about what happens to the folks in Loudoun County instead of, yeah. instead of what Santec wants him to do or Republic wants him to do. Very disheartened, and I, I wish uh, I would would like to call for at least one or two of those folks to resign and give the county an opportunity to appoint a couple more and get the leadership on that board headed in the right direction. That's just me. So, well, here's my that. problem, Larry. <laughs> Sugar <coat. laughs> Now, wait till halftime. <laughs> if I put this on the commission meeting, to vote on it? No, no, no. no. All I'm going to do, listen to what I'm saying. I didn't say that. All I'm going to do is make a couple lawyers wealthy. And I, I'm not in the interest of doing that. And I didn't say vote. I said I wanted you to think vote and evaluate think the, the numbers. Can I ask one question? Yes, sir. 
is Roan County's waste the only waste that comes to that, our landfill? No. No, sir. From out of county, you're talking about? Right out of county. No, sir. They're the biggest, though, right? Thirty-eight percent. They've got to be the biggest. Well, now that's thirty-eight percent. You got to understand, thirty-eight percent is Sandpeck trucks hauling garbage in from everywhere. And Delco Village, Delco Village, there it goes. And it's no different. Uh, they've got right. certain contracts, and originally that's what the conception was that they would go out and be able to take care of Loudoun County contracts as Delco Village and some of the others and bring it in on special rate. That's where that come from. Now they, we did, we did as a commission sign over the uh, authority to them to make those tipping rates. That's changes. in the original contract. That's right? in the original yes. and that is not in the amendment. The original contract is not being talked about. It is the uh, addendum. Yes. Extent. So, the extension, whatever <clears throat> it is being talked about, and it is not to be confused as oh, we're doing a new contract. We are not. Right. So all you're doing is extending. And well, that was that was with what I think you have a lot of good good stuff for us, and not the least is the bond. But there was other other, other good things. Their benefit was an extended time period on the contract. Yes. So I, it was one of those everybody gets a little bit of something. Yes. So. Based on what we have right now, that was the best option that we could come up with between us and Sandpack. I think now, you did good getting uh, anything. I don't know why they give you anything. Miss Hunter and uh, Richard uh, did kind of disagree with me on, on guaranteeing of the $150. Well, that's it. $150,000. But again, they're basing that on tonnage. And that, uh, here again, when you get into the tonnage, that's going to change. They're going to get their tonnage up. And when the new ownership takes over, I feel that when the ownership takes over, that they're going to maximize. They want to maximize. Well, and I'm already showing Roan County's tonnage has increased for over the past six years. I mean, it's it stayed at somewhere between 10 and 11, 11,000 tons. Okay, now we're at twenty five nine. My guess is when Republic takes it, all negotiations are done. Yeah. I don't think Republic's going to care to talk to you about nothing. Now. I don't either. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm thinking your window of opportunity to do anything is closing right quickly. Well, the Seven one good years. thing about it, and Van, and my thoughts, <clears throat> excuse me, is that the window of opportunity, you're right, is closing. But that's a shorter window than. 2035. It's a shorter window. But you know where I'm going back? The bond. You got to go back to the bond. The bond is important. It's a very important factor. You either got to have the bond over here from the operator or you got to have the county. That's right. And when you get the county, you get all of Loudoun County. Lenore City and Loudoun are part of Loudoun County. But it all falls on Bay Bradshaw. It all falls on the county mayor. That's exactly right. Taxpayers of Loudoun County shall be responsible. Looks to me like you got two choices. Try to secure something with the extension or run it for seven more. That's going to be a hard decision that you're going to have to make. Not you, but the Solid Commission, Waste yes, Commission. Committee. Well, here again, folks, please understand that this commission does care. They do fight. Uh, there's some very good members on there that do fight. They just now got us riled up good and, good and hot. The thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to do anything without the support of all three stakeholders. There's going to be difference in opinions. I understand that. But we need an overall support from Loudoun County Commissioners North City and Loud. You see what that involves, though, right? I understand how it involves, yeah. but Denor City is sitting there right now with a split over this issue. No. Whatever Tony tells them to do, they'll do. Well, they I didn't promise. Do it. They, they didn't did do it last Monday night. I was there. Then Tony didn't tell them. If Tony <laughs> tells them to do it, they'll do it. That, you no, only have Eddie one person to convince the Lenore City. Uh, Eddie holds this up. When's your next meeting? December? Second December. Tuesday night in December. Okay. 
Well, y'all come I back. I would encourage you to come and uh, visit. Uh, well, no, I encourage never, you to look at it. You're more than welcome. I've Patrick. been here. <laughs> It, it makes your ears bleed to sit in one of these meetings. They're horrendous. Looks to me like you and your fellow commissioners have some work to do. We do. We do. But that's where, where we're at. From, that's my two cents worth on this issue. <coughs> we'll uh, see what your two know. cents is worth when Kelly gets done with you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's making any patent. Thank you. Then we'll make a decision. Kelly, anything else? Well, Kelly, I will tell you this about the tipping fee. I can't. I, I was thinking it might have been our attorney, but I know when we addressed this two or three years ago, when we talked about this, well, I was told that we can levy a surcharge. Uh, a yes. surcharge. Yes. But, like but only said, can you only do it on one customer? I think you can. Yeah. I don't think we can. I believe we give refunds to the. Three stakeholders. I can tell you the last mayor that pressed for the surcharge is no longer here. They, that helps you. They, uh, if they can differentiate against what they want to charge people to use the landfill, uh, you why know, you why, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't we'll know. just agree to disagree, but I think I, that we I'm been, not disagreeing. I say that has to be answered. I, I think that. Whether well, we I can think. reach in and put a surcharge on one customer no. of the Solid Waste Committee. We, we talked about this. Sometime in our in the last. It's not year. one customer. It is all out of county. That's the that's yeah. the it's point. And not think, one it's not customer. I think Chris Park said yeah, that. Think, yeah. He'll do it, but he has to pay it too. No yeah. matter. Now I don't know. Yeah. That's just what Brady he thought. My impression. Chris Parks, no, yeah. not in this case. This is we're talking about out of county. But but that's what he's saying. Yeah, Chris thinks that if you put it on one, it has to be on all. That's no. just no. a question that has to be answered. Well, I'll find out that. Solid I'll find out that. Yeah, that's, 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 I mean, I don't know the answer. I'm not disagreeing with anybody. Right. I just know I it's got a weird sound to it when we're going to say, yes, we're only going to charge out of county people so yeah. much and not in county people. Maybe as legit and legal as can be. I don't know. That sounds like the, that, that doesn't sound weird at all. That, I mean, that sounds like exactly how it should happen. I don't it's, disagree. It's this county's but land bill. It's, it's got because a charge they're, out they're of county. They're charging different. It's got a weird legal sound. Okay. Right. Okay. They're charging now, different. But that's a customer. They're charging the every is. customer differently. That's their thing. That's not us. Just somebody needs to find out. Yeah, I don't I know. know the answer. I'm not. sure. I but it sounds to me this. like again, this is one of the they gave the fee setting to Santec. That's right. Which was not us. The tipping fee. I know that was, that was the old old. So we can get it back. Get a break. No doubt. For top three, I know. I think Bob Kevin Stevens could negotiate that pretty good if he wanted to. For another ten million dollars, <laughs> we'd like to have that four hundred thousand back. Pop of Springs. Now let's move on to budget amendments. Why don't we? That's what I think. Okay, Satterfield, what do we say? Moving right along. Moving right along. Moving right along. Tracy Blair. I got your this have, Is there any tipping fees in this? <laughs> no, we got seven hundred thousand dollars in the county. Let's bill. make a New Year's resolution to never talk about trash again down here as long as we live. For somebody who didn't want to talk about trash, uh, you, you, you wore it out. I got Amen. We it the whole time. How do you do it? We knew you didn't do it. We talked the whole time. We ate them all, yeah. It's up to eight something. We got iron, right? We're going to do a for workshop. Well, we always talk about that at this time every year. You know what my position is? No workshop, no meeting. Yeah. We have to do the committee's workshop every year, right? Yeah. Do what? We did budget committee, but no workshop. Long as we don't have to vote on that in January, I don't care. I mean, we did the budget committee to change some things, but we didn't. Henry's the chair, so I'm, I'm, I'm totally. Henry will hear from us though. Tinker doesn't want to cancel a meeting. I know. Tinker never wants to cancel a meeting. What about Hurley? You can't cancel a meeting you don't attend. You can't attend a meeting you don't cancel. The mayor brought it up. Here we go. Here we go. Go, Tracy. Okay, I distributed spreadsheets for amendments. All of those will be on your agenda. Most notable will be Fund 101, County General as well as 171, which you don't have 171. In the county general fund, 
there's a $700,000 uh, increase in the projected income fund balance because we received $700,000 on our CARES grant. How much? $795,000. That's closer to eight. On our CARES grant. Um, That's covered for that bond cost. The uh, yeah, overall effect of yeah. all of the adjustments yeah. in the county general fund is about a $700,000 uh, increase. Yeah. There's one <laughs> amendment that you have that I did distribute in the county general fund. It's $8,000 on page. The budget committee did not recommend this. We're getting some more information on it. That was the, uh, yeah. it's for the assistant to the medical examiner, and it is on page 45. Hey, now what now? The assistant to the medical examiner. So we're going to pay him? He's got an assistant now? Estes. Estes has been going out doing the, the decoration. Don't want to get out of bed to go make Good one across. Call on That's going across Patel's desk. desk. I don't think Patel's the charge what he usually does. He's this is supposed to be an effort to help save us money. So we'll give Travis to save us all talks of money. Is it so what has it saved us? If not, we're going to have to walk away. So it looks like it's costing us $8,000 more a year. Well, if it saved us from some uh, autopsy things. Autopsies have been running $100,000, haven't they? plus. Yeah, but we're still very early in the year. And we, we discussed this in a heavy way in the budget committee, budget committee members, when Dr. Patel has submitted he's going to turn this over 200 bucks a pop to let Travis Estes. And our question then was, and we all agreed, that's fine if it's coming out of his $9,000. Well, apparently Patel doesn't plan to take it out of his $9,000. So he wants us to pay him and Estes and right now, as Buddy says, we're just waiting on a little more information on this. So Patel's not doing the job anymore. But still well, he, has to be, he has to be the one to sign. He has to be part but of now, the job. I, I he don't, don't have to be out of bed to go. It's saving us. Make him go. Well, he's paying. He, we're no, he's pay not. Him. We're paying as to right. sleep in. That's right. Okay. Well, and if he doesn't, then it could always end up to be a lot more going on. I want to find out if it's kept us from getting any autopsy performed. And that's going to be the difference. And I don't even know how that's possible. As many times you've said, I don't even know how that's possible. Everybody's, if you just, if, you, if I drop dead right now, I'm heading to the autopsy. I think it's a racket with the autopsy. I think we're working with UT, and UT's making a fortune so, off these autopsies. So, have you all done the research to find out if there's any way we can address this issue of autopsies? Because it has gone up. It's statewide. Yep, we can't touch it. Bob Bowman's been on it. We can't even make the cities pay their the autopsies in their part. It has to be paid by the county. Well, we I did a request and we got the letter back. Nope, it's this, it's that, it's opioids, it's all this, that, and the other. Mr. Chairman, I yeah. think I asked this in the budget workshop earlier tonight. Uh, I, there's been uh, such a plethora of information tonight, I think it has slipped my mind. Is Mr. Estes considered a county employee? No. No, he's priority. Okay. How then is he covered, allowed, or whatever to do what the coroner is supposed to do. Under the umbrella of Dr. Patel. It's almost like a nurse uh, practitioner. Under a nurse. Yeah. So, but, uh, and like Van said, if he wants to pay out of his pocket, but in essence, what he's done is hire him on behalf of the county. Mm -hmm. And we're paying him. Hey, How's Patel? Is he got a 1099 as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that'd be, I mean, that's fine, but I mean, he just decided, hey, I want you to do this, and we're going to pay you $200, and the county's been paying him. He made the call, not the county, to hire the assistant. Now, it comes to Patel's desk, and he's the ultimate sign-off on it, yeah. Even though he never looks at the body. But he just signed off. But Here, Travis has gotten certain. I'm just saying, he's hired somebody. Here was one of the questions in budget committee. And, and I, I don't I absolutely don't want to put Tracy or Buddy either one away. I don't know how we're writing checks to Travis Estes. I, I mean, we did not approve budget committee of paying Travis Estes anything. We said in budget if he gets it, he'll have to get it from Patel. Patel. But we've already paid how See, much? I don't Thirty. That conversation. I, Thirty-two I don't, or thirty-three or thirty-five hundred dollars. We've already paid Travis Estes two hundred dollars pop a check from Loudoun County. And, and I would have thought that would have taken some kind of action here. Well, so, we'd have to amend the budget, won't we? Yes, we would. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm talking about just even actually, our money should have been going to Dr. Patel. 
Dr. Patel would have paid Travis Estes. That's the same thing with him. He's still, he's a 1099 as well. That's fine. But Travis Estes wasn't hired by us to do anything. He submits his bills. I'm sure, he, I guess it, him or Dr. Patel, one submits your bills. And we're writing a check to Travis Estes. Hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't know how that happens, but that's, that's what I'm saying. where we're he, at. He, he hired Dr. Patel, in essence, hired Mr. Estes. He hired somebody to work for him at, at our expense. Yes. Which you and know, apparently I'm, didn't need our approval or nothing to do it. He just know, did it. I, I think we dropped the ball. Like we dropped the ball somewhere. We but Buddy's going to do some in, investigate and find out. Take care of that. this count on this next off. Topic. Thank you, Buddy, for checking <laughs> in. So that. <laughs> hang on, hang on, what? The budget committee did not recommend that amendment. No. Okay, so we're not adding no money. That one we need to pull out, which will increase the ending post outside of the house. Oh, we you did it. Set of you did it. We <laughs> still, we yeah. still got, we've got to pay Mr. Estes. I mean, we've got to account for the money that he's been paid so far. Correct? We need to take care of the budget, if, yeah. if, especially in the function. We have 9,000 in Dr. Patel's line, so his 3,500 right now is going to be paid out of Dr. Patel's line mm -hmm. till we come to a final conclusion. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to have to add a new line item in that budget yeah. to pay Estes. That line item is at 59, 58 right now, 58, okay. 59, So let me ask, so if Estes goes out and looks at a body, submits it to the county, paying $200, does Patel get any money from looking at that? He still gets his money. He, he still gets his $9,000 salary. Off. He sends us yes. a bill to well, sign off. Well, it's not salary, but yes. A, a bill to sign off for the whole year or just to sign off on that individual one? How does he bill? By the quarter? Um, uh, Dr. Patel, by the quarter. So he gets paid $9,000 a year, whether he looks at one or 1000 No. No, it's by like per case. Ah. Uh, so we're paying right Patel? Does the tail get paid by case? The tail is nine thousand a year. Was it flat? Flat. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought it was by case. So flat. No, no, he gets flat. Okay. Okay. And then we're paying two hundred bucks as well, so he sleeps in and lets Estes go do it for him. What if Estes is on the clock with priority? That was the, that was the whole idea. He's on the ambulance, so he's going to be there. I don't know how often he's actually on the ambulance. Does he run ambulance okay. much in there? Is, is this priority allowed? I see him every now and then when they're short, but mainly he responds and is cheap. He's got a black Jeep. Good question. The other question is, is, is Estes allowed to work a second job off the clock with priority? That's not a problem. Or pay him money to work to moonlight? But I mean, if priority said he couldn't do it, that wouldn't change us paying him. That would be priority this year. Well, All right. And hey, moving right along, Commissioner. Come on. Satterfield. They're moving right along. The, uh, it's almost the kickoff one that, time. Um, you need oh, to know about is in something. the general capital projects. That's where the $1 million came in from the state. And um, you don't have a spreadsheet for that because I have to add the amendments that were recommended by the Capital Projects Committee. Uh, but they reviewed the request from the different departments, and there's 400, 486,680 of the $1.1 million is what the Capital Projects Committee is recommending. Uh, that includes two years of vehicles for the Sheriff's Department, one for fiscal, the fiscal year we're in and the next fiscal year. Um, so that will leave about $656,000 of the $1.1 million unspent that's still in capital projects at this moment. Along with that, the regular um, recommendations for this year's budget were presented by the Capital Projects Committee and 60000 $60,084 was recommended. That ha That is not part of the million. It's just regular fiscal year capital projects. Obviously not too many. You will receive those spreadsheets in your packet of information. And everything else that you have is, is self-explanatory. If you have any questions, give me a call. Okay, it'll be on December 7th. I make a motion for adjournment. 
Can't make a motion of the workshop. What's well, let's adjourn. You? We can too. I'm I make so a motion tired. that we allow Miss Brewster to make a motion. Larry, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> okay. That's it, Tracy. Okay, I'll call that short. Yes, 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 I never ever have. No, I don't Buddy's even just have that. This is just a. I've won. I'm getting to have a day off. Who's playing next? Oh, I was ignoring him a lot. He was talking to me. Can't play this game. Oh, you was you was kissing up that bunch. You wasn't watching the whole thing. Come on, man. You tell him up and I've been on a lot. I think that's it. I'm going to have a lot of kids. I'll sleep this time. As long as you don't talk about mama. Grandparents yeah. for my kids, I'll sleep just fine. Yeah. Oh, all those. <laughs> good, 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 good love, my grandma. She was 90 years old, living by herself in Mount City, Tennessee. Kelly, have a good night. Is that your mother or daddy? Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. So, Taylor. Mr. Taylor. Kelly, did you make the same request that I made and ask Mr. Fields to resign? Yeah, to be worse. Nothing today. Tim Brewster is here. Why weren't you here, Kelly Brewster? Kelly, why weren't you at the meeting? No. She wouldn't check that out. I miss you. That's a solid waste. I'm going to need to live on the other side of it. Well, it sucks how it's just barely a little bit of dead on the water. I finally found it. I said, John Ed, I tried it. She was in the so she wasn't here. Oh, yeah. You she wasn't here. Was I bet he's opposed to it. I Oh my gosh. Tell me you're kidding. Tell me you're, you didn't skip solid ways to be away from us. I had to run. I heard private parties. No, I didn't get it. Hey, Van. Yes. I had to run it. Tammy says you're supposed to.